Tero, welcome here. Good to have you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's also a very exciting subject for us at Woolman and long waited thing that we can actually use with Shopify Plus now natively. So this is this has been interesting for us as well. Great. Uh, now uh, I'll start sharing my screen and let's jump to the actual agenda for today. So why go B2B with Shopify? Uh, we will talk shortly about Woolman and then we will jump to the actual topic, B2B. What have we learned so far? What is Shopify's B2B functionality? Why should you care? Then we will talk about the B2B capabilities with Tero. What does Shopify's B2B functionality offer? How does it work? Uh, what uh, what, what uh, is on the roadmap? And then we will also discuss about the upcoming updates. Uh, shortly wrapping up with data strategy why data is important in a b2b shopify space and finally there is room for q a so you can ask your questions so before jumping to the agenda i kindly remind you please use the chat window for questions we will tackle the most of the questions after this session that will be here um so during the session if you come up with any questions please use the chat window uh, pass on those questions and we'll definitely talk about them one by one after the session the q and a phase good to have you all here let's get started uh tero kindly tell me about your background who are you and what's your current position yeah i i glad to do that miko could you share your screen i didn't share Sorry, I'll try yeah, that again. Oh. Just a tiny moment. Yeah. I'll do it so once more. While, while Mikko is doing that, I can sort of uh, introduce myself. So, Tero to as my name, CTO and one of the founders at Woolman. And I have a long history with e commerce. I've been basically building only web shops since 2005, started with IBM technology. And um, I was working with um, a very, very large nordic retailers brands and wholesalers at the, at the time and uh, kind of get used to this uh, also quite complex b2b processes when we were building web shops for uh, wholesalers in in nordics um, after that last uh, seven years i have been basically working with shopify only and um, uh, being being part of this Woolman journey and doing a lot of lot of cases with with Shopify and D two C cases, and we have seen this demand for B two B for a long time, even in with with Shopify. And before we companies have been solving these issues with Shopify apps and ecosystem add-ons, uh, but um, now when when this Shopify P2P has finally arrived. We've been waiting it since they purchased the Handshake a couple of years back, which was the biggest P2P SaaS platform uh, available at the time. And um, now it's here, so it's really uh, interesting times to uh, start working on the, more on P2P side uh, on, on, on top of D2C. Lovely. Thank you, Tero. Can you now see my screen properly? Yes, we do. Lovely. My name is Mikko Rekola. I'm the chief evangelist here at Woolman. I've helped 200 plus brands uh, past four and a half years. And my job here at Woolman is to help with our biggest customers to make sure that they get the most out of Shopify and they grow in a reliable and predictable way. Uh, my main topic these days, with what, what I consult on, is data and data-related growth with, with Shopify Plus. Great. Let's get further. Uh, Woolman is Europe's largest Shopify Plus agency. We are currently... Uh, uh, in uh, multiple different countries serving the whole Europe and actually the whole global market. We have 100 plus employees. We have uh, created 20 plus uh, private apps. Uh, we've helped more than 350 brands. And what we are actually right now doing is that we are very much consulting in the B2B space with, with Shopify. And Tara will tell you more about uh, that later on. 
So Tero, now the big question, why go B2B with Shopify? Yes, I think the absolutely biggest beauty of uh, Shopify B2B is that it's uh, it has everything that Shopify has built so far. Everything that Shopify ecosystem has built so far, it's compatible with that. So it's basically the same platform now with the B2B capabilities. So it allows to build new type of B2B customer experience. We have the same tools that we have been used for years to build D2C customer experience. We, uh, we have the same ecosystem tools, same marketing stack, same partner network, same value added services like 3PL. Everything is already connected to native Shopify and all that is available. So that is the biggest beauty. But of course, to make it successful P2P, it needs these key P2P, capa uh, P2P capabilities that haven't been there. And I would say that P2P requires everything that D2C plus these specialities. And we are definitely finally seeing that what, what, what has been predicted for years that P2P commerce is not just a, a kind of order, ordering channel, it's getting more into sales size more into marketing and that's the that's the biggest beauty of of it and of course the another another big thing is that it is now um native part of the shopify plus um, platform so basically all of you who are running shopify plus today this is all included it's there it's just to utilize it take it in use but of course there is things to consider what are the integrations, for example, you need? What are the what, what is the customer experience you want to uh, build for your uh, retailer retailer network, and all sort of things? How how do you onboard customers and so on? But technically, everything is there. Um, of course, you will see a little bit roadmap further. So when I talk about everything, it's like the key parts of B to B to B. Uh, what is needed, but let's get that, that a little bit later. Uh, we can move on. Uh, and actually, Wait. the image here is if you haven't been looking from your Shopify Plus or you are not on Shopify Plus yet, uh, this image is from the company section, which is the new kind of customer profile in Shopify where everything kind of sits that it's related to B2B. Yeah, let's move. Hola. Then, Tero, uh, slightly about the Shopify ecosystem. You are or have been talking about the Shopify ecosystem and the benefits of Shopify ecosystem. What does that then mean? What does that mean in B2B phase? Yeah, I mean, the whole, whole power of Shopify lies in the ecosystem. But of course, it needs that the Shopify platform needs to, needs to have these key things that are listed here, basically, that what are the benefits of SaaS. And, but they also needed to build the platform so that it supports the ecosystem and they manage well since they have created this largest e-commerce ecosystem around Shopify. And that, that's basically basically the beauty of the whole Shopify, not just, just B2B. And um, um, on the next slide, for example, you can see um, the technology partners of Shopify ecosystem or this is actually only the selected Shopify plus technology partners some of these works of course in every, every with every plan but this is just a selected set of set of the ecosystem but it's not just technology partners what Shopify ecosystem is that it's it is agencies like Woolman who are helping merch, merchants to build their um, uh, e-commerce architecture and help them to grow but it's also other value added services like 3PL providers who, are, who have already connected also to Shopify. And, and with, with the help of these ready-made integrations, the best available tools, it gives the best possible kind of outcome. The e-commerce platform itself is, is, is not an island. It needs to be connected with other third-party value added services. So that's 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 like the big 
big big thing be, behind here why 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 it's important great and what about the shopify's b2b capabilities currently so what does it support and where is it uh, strong right now yeah this list here is basically what Shopify launched in the first phase, and I think they started absolutely from the right angle. This, these are the things that are mostly required when B2B commerce is concerned. So there needs to be price list, and with price lists, I mean that you can you can set up customer specific prices. There is way for the smaller merchants to do it easily with the percent percentage based discounts from from your uh, retail price but uh, you can also set up customer specific item level prices that is very very common when we come to a little bit large uh, working with larger brands that they have their own contract contracts and agreements with their retailers and we can we can do that now with shopify we can have a customer specific or company specific price list or actually many price lists for same uh, company and we can also select for example the currency that uh, the uh, b2b customer is using and that is related to companies and the payment terms that we can have a company is the new kind of customer profile in shopify which is connected to price list and payment terms so we can set up the payment terms based on a customer location so this allows for example the customer to have more than uh, one subsidiary or it can have a project which have not a, a different kind of prices so we can location based detect what is the price list that is used what are the payment terms and so on and of course um, p2p also needs a couple of um, different things in the checkout and uh, d to c and that has been a kind of a little bit stupid point that Shopify has lacked before that adding for example some information uh, to the customer record like a native place for VAT numbers and etc et has, has not been there but now all that is covered and the p2p checkout with customers that are recognized and they can actually log in very easily they don't even need a password it's kind of you always get this magic link to your email account and you you, you just need to know your email account and you can look you can log in and you can have your whole organization structure going through the same check, a very simple checkout process where everything is pulled uh, uh built um in the checkout for you from payment terms to uh shipping addresses and so on and then there is self-service. This B two B customers need to change their addresses. Most likely, this is the mostly about addresses right now, but most likely more functionality coming coming later on. And last but not least are the business customer APIs. And many B two B companies or companies doing B two B business on top of their D two C business, they are very ERP driven. The customer specific pricing the prices are in erp uh, the companies are there in in the erp the payment terms everything and previously with with these third-party apps in the shopify ecosystem it was really difficult to integrate anything now we have apis and we can we can uh, integrate everything between uh, shopify and erp system or warehouse management system and that's that's very important important thing and lately Shopify has uh, also launched this global ERP program and I hope this will also follow to this business customer APIs now it's more more D to C focused integrations between most common ERP systems like uh, Microsoft Business Central and NetSuite and uh, Infor and there's those common flows are there uh, can can be created with the pre-made integration. These business customer APIs most likely will will follow and make the integrations easier in the in the future. But it, now it's already possible with custom integrations. 
Lovely. Thanks, Tero. Just add one thing on top is here. When we talk about so-called like new capabilities, these are definitely there. But also what I would like to point out is that if you think about B2B e-commerce, the, all the good stuff that Shopify does for B2C is here, meaning that the customer experience to shop there in a B2B Shopify store is actually on a very good level. Tero, any, any comments there? Well, I, I think it is. It, it's there, but what what you have to consider that B two B customers are doing different things than B two C customer in the web shop. So, for example, one of the learnings we've we've seen is that uh, it might be a good idea to think about B two B, even though it's part of the platform, but that, for example, as a separate web shop. It's, not for everybody, but maybe at least in the larger scale that that allows you to build like different kind of approach for the B2B. They m most likely know, know your products better. So and they, in, in some cases, they want to order very fast. They, they are ordering, for example, if you are in a fashion business, they, could, they want to order all the sizes or different number of different sizes. So you can build different kind of UI where you can easily select all the items from a from, um, uh, single product or, or the variants and how many you want to purchase. So, so we can use the same set of technology underneath and build unique uh, user experience, but it's not exactly the same than D2C and B2B. For some com companies it might be enough, but uh, in a larger scale, I, I definitely recommend to go one step further and build different experience for the B2B customers. Very good, Tero. Super important to point out that. Then, as I promised you, a little surprise. Tero, what is this? Yeah, this was also a little bit surprise for us because Shopify is usually very um, uh, careful what they, what they say about upcoming updates. And um, this is quite... Um, press news what they are planning about B2B. So right now we are exactly there, the 2022 uh, half two, and we have actually seen one of these upcoming launches, which is the business customer APIs. And there is some some things already at the on the draft order, for example, available that this B2B prices can be can be used with with draft orders. But here's the uh, kind of short-term roadmap what they are planning to announce and ma many of these things are are important uh, for example this draft order checkout is definitely something that the b2b sales people would would like to use with uh, with shopify um, this b2b payment and shipping function is, is something that is replacing a little bit shopify scripts on, on D2C side, but it's also going to work on the B2B side, so there can be more logic what payment uh, payment methods are available or what what kind of shipping price, uh, fees and prices we need need to use when they are uh, ordering larger quantities. Things like flexible shipping addresses or uh, one, one nice thing will be also like branding this B2B customer account, so you can build more um, a functionality uh, for the customer account itself and branding it. Um, maybe the next step, the half one, 2023, there will be a couple of things that are quite interesting and definitely the qu quantity price breaks, quantity purchasing rules are maybe something that quite many miss. Some of these can be built already to today using this um, um, Shopify scripts. But um, this is definitely something that I, I was already anyway waiting that they will will build, build to the B2B and also B2B discounts. And some pot potential add additions they have for 2023 there is, for example, support for the headless approach. If you have selected that one for, for your site, and um, things like parcel payment, 
bulk add-on add product uh, via grid view. Yeah, some of that we can already build using Teams, but uh, I think there is more like native native capabilities also to the Teams and uh, and uh, Shopify admin. Great. But the, Pero, you have been with Shopify for a long time. How do you feel about the roadmap, like overall? What would be your, your estimation on this? Well, it's um, time-wise, it's difficult to say. Shopify's style to build things is that it needs to be ready. It needs to be tested. It needs to be thought through that how, how it works. Otherwise, they cannot launch it because, because of their scale. Um, but uh, I think the most important thing there is that this P2P is part of the native Shopify platform. So, yeah, upcoming updates here are, these are all related to P2P. But there is a lot of other things happening in the, in the core Shopify that is also included in the P2P. And if we look a little bit backwards, it's like a, um, uh, multi warehousing it's uh omnichannel things it's it's um it is kind of things that Shopify is building that it's everything is in this core platform and i'm really happy that they didn't build a separate b2b platform after handshake per, uh, they purchased handshake but it's part of the key Shopify uh, roadmap so these are just the, some things that are only related to B2B. Great to hear. Before jumping to the data strategy, Tero, would you super fast comment us that what have we learned about this B2B on Shopify so far? What have you learned? What have we learned? What is your like initial take? Well, uh, we have learned that uh, overall, it's very easy to take take in use. It's more like building the processes, how you onboard customers, uh, what is your process? How do you price things? How what are the processes you need to need to integrate? And all like also this what I already said that this customer experience size that it's not exactly the same that D 2 C customers want to have. It's it's more like a business user view, but still you can sell more. You can tell more about your brand. You can you can inform your customers and you can care your resellers better. So yeah, that that part is important but also that understanding those customers which leads us to the data that we need to understand the b2b customer also like we need to understand d2c customers thanks tero totally i couldn't agree more so pretty much the thing that we've noticed with our first b2b shopify customers is that they want to have data in possession and they want to be updated with on data and we've also noticed that if you're running some old setups, you are definitely struggling with data. Um, so the positive part with, with Shopify's B2B environment is that uh, we can definitely support your data strategy. We can make sure that we also help planning how to how to play with data, how to make sure that you have a data strategy in place, who sits on the data, what's data governance, what's data security, and what data to collect. So we are typically also like consulting within these topics. And I'm also delighted to announce that our dedicated data management platform called Ellis has full support to Shopify's B2B as well. So this is currently used by quite many of our D2C customers, selling directly to customers, but we also have inbuilt full support to b2b so we can follow orders and customers and also companies so you can look at one individual buyer or one company level we can handle them both so if you are having like b2b data related questions feel free to reach out we'll de definitely keen to keen to help on those as well now it's time for the questions we've had some questions so please just in the point out our questions and tero is ready to answer Yes, thank you both. So we have one question here. Uh, what about product list slash customer? We have different selection to different customers. Yeah, like a, a customer specific assortment. So if I pay the pay functionality, it doesn't answer that directly yet, like as a native capability. But of course, there is um, ways to customize it. 
especially on the P2P side that we can uh, where sites are can be also behind for example the password and login that P2P customers needs needs to lock in and there is ways to customize that um, at least what uh, P2P customers are seeing for example using using with locksmith app but also there's in the roadmap there is this contextual contextual publishing and I hope that is going to bring something to that customer specific selections but that's that is not um, not a part of native capabilities yet thank you we also have another question is customer access to your b2b store managed differently compared to d2c do you grant access to b2b customers or what is the sign up process uh yes basically there there is an another uh, login for p2p customers and um, p2p customers needs to be they need to have a company they need to have an email email address within that, that company and they are looking uh, using this different p2p um, login and they don't like i said before they don't need to have a password but they just need to use this p2p login click that they uh, enter the email address click and they will get a, a kind of magic link to their email and after by clicking that they get get the p2p customer view to uh, shopify store and with their own prices for example um, payment terms and so on so yes it's a, a different process to log in as a p2p p2p customer and usually and the customer needs to be there they can also be invited there is own um, email template that when a new person for example is added to your organization since one company could have a multiple representatives so your company has a new new buyer or, or your customer has a new buyer when that one is added they will get a, get an email that you have been added to this profile and you can start purchasing as a p2p customer from that store thank you that's all the questions uh please Terra Mikko, tell uh where people can reach you if they have any further questions or uh want to learn more about the b2b side on shopify totally thanks jacinda so you can email us mikrekola at woman.io tero at woman.io anytime if you want to know more about shopify's b2b capabilities and also we have our commerce insights podcast that can be found as example on spotify and there is that brand new episode actually on b2b and there will be more shopify b2b related podcast content on commerce insights in upcoming weeks so please stay tuned and if you want to know more about woolman woolman.co visit our website uh, and stay up to date thank you so much and uh have a nice day everyone thank you very much take care bye bye